The man behind Facebook's marketing, it's David Fisher, and we're going to hear all about him right now with Shandy Race with the Wall Street Journal out in San Francisco, and she's been digging around. And marketing and, and Facebook, are, are, it's a sort of a delicate thing, isn't it? Because overt marketing, there aren't really billboards and stuff and ads, so it's, it's kind of funny. Tell us about this. This is a tricky role for this guy. It is a very tricky role because his job is obviously to make money off of advertising on Facebook, but that's something that Mark Zuckerberg has been very reluctant to do uh, since Facebook's earliest days. And so the job that David Fisher has is to try to balance the needs of the marketers and the advertisers who want to get in front of Facebook's users, 845 million users, uh, and also balancing uh, the user experience on the site. And so what he's trying to do, and what his entire team is trying to do, is create ads that feel like they're part of the social experience. And Shandy, your story knows these are called sponsored stories. Tell us uh, how they work. So last year, right around this time, uh, Facebook launched something called Sponsored Stories. And what it let you do is, for instance, if I'm a user and I like Starbucks on Facebook, uh, Starbucks can pay Facebook so that on the side of your screen as my friend, you will see that I like Facebook, I, that I like Starbucks, and it'll amplify that message. And normally, because of the way that Facebook works, there's so many different activities going on that could get drowned out. So this lets marketers have a way to pay uh, to get those messages uh, in front of people. But what they've decided to do this month that's really different is actually put those stories right in the newsfeed. And the newsfeed is sort of like the TV screen or kind of like the way I think of it is like product placement versus a commercial. It's sort of like right in there in the natural feed of things. Uh, and so as you go uh, every day uh, to, to check out what's going on on Facebook, you could see that I like Starbucks and it would look as if the same thing as if I made a regular status update about what I ate for breakfast or something like that. Starbucks can pay to have that sort of natural social message amplified. This brings up so many questions for me. Uh, so I have two questions. And the first part is Only not for two? The, four, the first part Only is not two. four parts, so I'll keep it short. The first being, how successful has this been to date without the sponsored stories being in the newsfeed? Have we been able to measure that? And secondly, how do you think that Facebook users are going to react to having these ads just right in their newsfeed? Okay, well, the answer to the first question is we don't know. Mm -hmm. Because, unfortunately, Facebook doesn't give us a lot of secrets uh, in their S1, in their regulatory filing, about how the ads are broken down. Most of the ads on Facebook right now are display ads, uh, which are sort of those simple banner ads that you see everywhere on the Internet and require this you to click on. Uh, and so sponsored stories is really early. We don't know. Um, in fact, as one of their risk factors in the regulatory filing, Facebook actually says that sponsored stories is unproven um, and experimental. And so there really isn't much data on it yet. Even marketers don't know at this point if it's actually working. Um, and then what was your second question? Oh, just how do you think people uh, are going to react? Users? Yeah. Right. Well, so the whole point of it is that these aren't advertisements that you're going to see. It's natural status updates or natural actions that people do on Facebook anyway. It just sort of gets past all the clutter. So it's not like you're going to be seeing an advertisement for Starbucks in your newsfeed. You're going to be seeing what I say about Starbucks or what I do about Starbucks. Something that you would maybe see anyway, but now an advertiser has an opportunity to make sure that doesn't get lost in the clutter and that you actually do see that. Yeah, you know, that sounds, I don't want to be picky, that sounds like an ad. I mean, doesn't it to you? Does, <laughs> well, to yeah. Lauren, doesn't it, it to you? It sounds like an ad. It does, but it also means that a user has had some sort of participation in that as well. They had to like it, right, Shandy? I mean, they exactly, had, right. exactly. You had to do something. You had to either say, I love Oreo cookies, or, you know, I love Red Bull, or something like that for it to show up and get amplified. Obviously, I think that what you guys are both getting at is a really important point that Facebook has this algorithm in the newsfeed called EdRank, and it's supposed to bring out sort of whatever it thinks is the most relevant information. We don't know how that algorithm actually works, but it's supposed to bring out the most relevant. And this sort of seems like it's not the most relevant information that's coming up in the newsfeed, it's what advertisers pay for. So to some extent, there is some manipulation going on there. But that's something that Facebook sort of has to do. Uh, we'll have to see if users even pick up on it or notice it. Uh, oh. I'm not sure that they will. Oh, we will. Believe me. <laughs> we, have, we have eagle eyes here.